Recently, we got to attend an Oscar preview, and this is an upcoming survival crafting game that looks a little like Valheim. It's Norse themed, but it's definitely different. So while I did go to a preview event, it's, I actually got to play the game. Also, there was a beta. Uh, I'm not allowed to use any footage from the game that I played, but I'll just go ahead and say tech-wise, I only suffered from one crash and I played about 10 hours, and for a beta, that's pretty freaking good. Anyways, what is the game? So it is survival crafting, but instead of just building up for yourself or your buddies, it is co-op, one to four players. You're actually building a village, a civilization, and you're going to eventually recruit some NPC villagers to help you out with various tasks. Now you play as, the demo we're seeing here is Lady Asuka. Uh, you can also play as a male character. They're sort of like, gods isn't the right word, but they were like taught by the gods and then cast out of their uh, homeland. And then along the way, they found this land and the gods are basically like, all right, we're gonna give you one more chance don't screw it up but like you're the last well you and your friends are the last of the asuka people and your ship eventually crashes into land and there you go you are like set off to just rebuild your civilization uh, and there's a few like quests that will give you guidance to get started but for the most part it's going to expect you to figure out a lot of stuff on your own one really cool thing about this, it's almost like a, if you think of like Diablo or Path of Exile where you hold the button down and you can see all the loot on the floor. It doesn't stay permanently, but you can hit Z and what it does is it's like, here's the rocks, here's the sticks, here's the flowers and the onions, all the little things that are sometimes hard to see in these games, it points it out for you. So finding resources is not hard because I have that button. I thought it was great. And maybe other games do it, but none come to mind. I did play this solo. Generally, I play these games co-op. It's just a really busy week, so I couldn't get uh, Smith in on this. But we crash land, and the first thing I'm thinking is like, all right, I got to find a decent spot to build up my shelter. So I build a fire, and I go out and find some supplies to make my axe, my pick, and all that other stuff. And I come back, and my fire's burned out, and I didn't realize that the base fire, if you don't refuel it, will disappear. So I built a bigger fire, built my shelter, and then I built all my little crafting things, and I was like, dang, how do I get more villagers to this place? Because I don't want to be crafting all this stuff myself, right? I want NPCs to do it for me. So I was looking around at the buildings, and I saw this Jotun's blood thing. Jotun's blood. And I put it down. And eventually, I got enough of the Jotun's blood to put it in there and call a villager. And what happened was I had 10 minutes. In 10 minutes, this villager was going to pop up. And then once he got here, I could assign him to, you know, I'd give him a house. And then I could give him a job, basically. If not, which what I found out, because when I came back... Oh, one important thing to mention is, I don't know if this changes later, but I had two choices when I recruited a villager. And basically, they had a good buff and a bad buff, but there were slots for four or five different stats and they only had two at the time so maybe you upgrade it and you can get better npcs i'm not entirely sure on that but normally it would be like hey i'm a really good worker but since i'm so big i eat more food or i like to work out in the sun but i need more water because i'm going to be working out in the sun things like that and then their buff would be something like I am hardy, so I can crack the skull of some skeletons pretty easily. Or, I like working in the rain. I get a buff to stamina in the rain. Through this, you can kind of build up the village you want to build up, right? Like, do I want a farming village? Do I want a bunch of miners? Do I want to build up a war village and go because there is combat i didn't have a lot of combat but i fought some skeletons and i fought some weird like vine dog things not entirely sure and there was this like big statue skeleton thing and i didn't even mess with that because i only had a stone hatched at that point and i just figured it wasn't going to work out but the combat is pretty much like swing 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 it's you know survival crafting combat i didn't have really good weapons but it does have a dodge and it's kind of got like that iframe Dark Souls thing. So you can kind of cheese some fights that I found out, which is great. So anyways, once a villager shows up, you can assign them to work. But I was actually away from my village when my first villager showed up. And I came back and he had started building my building up for me because I had already assigned it. It's a blueprint building system, by the way. I didn't see if there was free building. So it's like, hey, you need these materials, find a spot, and then it'll kind of like show the silhouette of the building and you have to bring the materials. Um, the new Fortnite Lego thing did that. Not new, but that's what it did. And I believe Sons of the Forest did as well. It's very similar to those systems. And for me, 
That's great. I'm not a builder. When I build in these games, I have a very tall square shack. This makes things look a lot better. If you are playing solo, I'm going to go ahead and say it's real tedious until you get some villagers because building up things like you have to chop down the trees and then you have to get the sticks and then you have to get the bark and then you have to make sure you break the trees in the right way so you get the large sticks but you can only carry one of those at a time so you got to get a surplus over at your base again just having one villager it was like okay this is way easier because he'd just go out and collect everything for me and i'd just go cut everything down it did take me a second to realize because all the tree, you know, and generally in survival games, like the first tree, they're still tall, but it's just like oak or whatever. It's basic stuff. And I kept going against these trees and it was like, you can't cut these, you can't cut these. And eventually I was like, oh, I need to cut these smaller trees, that, which made sense. But it didn't make sense until I actually saw the tree. And some of these things, like the rocks have a lot of HP. And I was like, man, this is going to take forever to break. But eventually, like, you get 25% damage into this large rock and then it breaks off into pieces because some of your buildings actually need, like, larger chunks of stone, which, again, this is a great reason to have extra villagers around so they can carry your stones for you. I got, like, roughly 8 to 10 hours, as I said earlier. I had four villagers, and they did mention that sometimes your village can be attacked. I did not have anything. I honestly, like I said, I didn't have much issue with combat. So there were some skeletons outside my base every now and then because I made my camp near some ruins. But other than that, no issues, which for me was great because I wanted to build up. I didn't want to get ransacked while I was out and had no weapons. And that might have been the trigger. It might have been that I didn't make any equipment. And a few things they mentioned in the preview, it is co-op focused. There is no PvP, which I know is going to turn some people off, but... I play these game co-op. I cannot imagine. The only time I've ever done PvP in this game was in Ark. And I remember logging off and coming back and my wall was destroyed because someone had made a ship with a cannon on it and they shot my wall and broke it while I was sleeping. So all my dinosaurs were gone. And that was pretty much it for me. I don't, I don't PvP in these games anymore. There is also a weather system. I only ended up seeing normal rain and fog. Of course, day and night and all that as well. I would imagine there's winter because they mentioned seasons and certain crops growing in seasons. I'm not entirely sure. It didn't get that far. They did mention that rain, like too much rain, will eventually deteriorate your buildings. None of my buildings broke except for the very first basic fire, which just burnt out. So I don't know how long that's going to take. That's always something that I'm always like uh, a little wary on. But as long as it's balanced, I'm cool with it. Oh, and one more thing that they mentioned about co-op is it's not like the host has control of all the villagers. The villagers are controlled by all of the players in the game and storage and stuff like that is also uh, accessible by everyone. So again, it's designed with co-op in mind. All right, well, that's going to do it for me. I enjoyed my time with Asuka. I'm going to be looking forward to playing it. The early access release date currently is June 20th, which, my goodness, it's almost already May. But yeah, it's looking good. I like these types of games, and when I don't have to worry about PvP, even better. All right, that's going to do it for me. Later, Gators.